Good morning everyone. We're just at the back of the uh, back of the village. I've had all sorts of technical issues trying to get this set up and to work, so I've already discovered that uh, I think it's the Lavalier mic that I've got rigged up under the seat has failed. It's not the sound recorder, it's the mic. Which I suppose it's a cheapy thing, it's failed ever because uh, when I'm plugging it into the zoom I'm getting a good sound readout until I plug it in and then there's nothing. So that's the problem there, so we're stuck with that just now. Uh, I'm trying the multicam set up. I'm back to the camera on the chin. Which uh, I'm not so sure about because if I remember rightly, which I can't see obviously just yet, um, being on the chin, the screen cuts right across the middle of it. Uh, which means put it on the smaller screen, which means you get more wind noise, which means you get poorer sound. So it's a bit of a trade off here. Not quite sure how to do it if, it, if that's the case. I, I, I think it was that way before. Don't know. Anyway, we've got to pop it to work. So, once again, we're going to take the acidic route to work, shall we say. And, uh, my lord, it's hot. Then we're going to. Oof, change. We're going to then take up some food to mum and dad. It's not really a roundabout way to get there, but uh, we'll try something, eh? So as well as testing it, the multicam thing, with uh, two of them running off the mains, which I'm not convinced about, but it's, I think, absolutely think that's the way ahead, but I'm not quite sure. And, uh, see how that goes. We're also trying, although I know where I'm going, I've put a route into my route app and I'm um, trialling it through the navigation app again because there's been some issues with it. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So even though I know where I'm going all day, I've put it into this app just to see how it works. No matter what you do with the volume, it seems to blow your eardrums out every time you speak. So I'm quite sure about that. At the moment we're on the, the opposite side of the tweet to the one we normally on. Windy, windy. Warm wind though. So the tweet's down over there and the main road's down over there. And uh, I'm normally over that way, looking over here. Uh, this is a nice road, quiet road, quietish anyway, a smiling cyclist. So, what have we done with the cameras? So what I've done is I've taken the, the drift, which is filming at 1080 30, 30 frames a second, and that's now sat just beside the exhaust just down here to see what the view is that way. We then have let's just turn it down again. We then have a Hero 3, which is this one here, filming at 1080 30. The one on my chin is a Hero 4, filming at 4K 30 frames a second. And the one down on the side down there, it's another Hero 4 filming at 4K 30 frames a second. So I've never so I've done 4K before. I've got 120 gigabyte cards. According to that, I'll get about I'll get about four hours out of it, which is more than enough today. Now, the two 4K Hero 4s are running off mains power. 
And the other one, uh, the three, I hate this junction. Because you think you saw it and you haven't. Because uh, that path gives you a false steer. Anyway. So the, the, the drift is on battery power, which is fine, it'll last uh, eight hours or so. Uh, the Hero 3 is on battery power, and I don't know, they get about anywhere between two and four hours at the battery, because it's so variable. And uh, obviously the, the other ones are mains powered. Now the one down on the right down there, is powered directly from the bike from the USB ports. The one on my chin is powered by a power pack. You can see the cable here dangling. Power pack that's plugged directly into the camera. So that's the the setup. Now whether that's going to be the setup, I don't know. I've had four cameras set up before, I had a three camera set up actually, yeah. uh, which is very good, gives you slightly different views and stuff, but the battery usage was just brutal and you, sometimes the batteries would just fail after only being in for a really short time, and then you had to, you know, sort of bend that battery, try and find a decent battery and the battery stops dwindling all the time. Now they're not cheap, or well, they get cheap ones, but they tend to be the ones that fail. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a trade off. So I'm trying the battery power thing, which I think's fine, uh, the sort of mains power, which I think will work fine if uh, it's dry, you know, and if it's wet, well, I have done it in the wet. But it's not the best, far from it. So, we shall see. We'll see what happens. So this is part of the B709, we joined it just at Square there, but it runs, uh, this section of it anyway, it runs from the leading down to, oh, Langham eventually, this is, we're just going as far as the Gordon Arms obviously, because we're, um, we're on an essential journey, and we're only taking a roundabout way, I think, to go via Langham would just be stretching it just a bit, just a bit. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see, and I don't know if any of you guys out there who film, if you um, have a mixture of resolutions on your camera setup when you're using a multi-camera setup, um, how it works in post-production, because uh, what tends to happen in DaVinci Resolve when I bring my footage and it asks me if I want to do it to the project settings, which is slightly higher, I think, than the actual camera settings, and I always default to just saying yes to the project settings. It doesn't seem to have a discernible out impact on the output. But what I have noticed is, I think, um, when you watch video, even my recent videos, with the 1080-30 as opposed to 1080-60 that I had with I just had the GoPros, and when I switched to the drift, being the main camera, which was mostly for its battery life, because um, I like to film an entire ride if I can, um, 
I, I felt there was a, a noticeable difference. Um, not, not, not as noticeable when you're sitting watching on the computer, but I tend to watch most YouTube content on my TV. And I felt there was a noticeable difference in the TV between the 1080 60 footage that I'd got with the, the GoPro Hero 4 and the 1080 30 with the, Go, with the Drift and the GoPro 3. Um, I'll be interested to see cause what the difference is with 4K because when I watch 4K um, motorcycle videos on my telly, uh, they're absolutely stunning. You can see the difference in the quality. So I'm hoping that it'll be the same. And uh, I'm not quite sure how this 1080 will fit in with that. It might be that I end up having the Hero 4s as the main event. I don't know about using the Hero 3 sitting there. It bounces an awful lot. I just know it's in Britain. That crossbar is not the most stable thing on the planet. It doesn't have image stabilisation in the Hero 3. So, I don't know. By the way, all these cameras, with the exception of the Drift, are second hand. I've got the Drift brand new, and uh, the, the Hero 3s and 4s, they were all bought second hand for YouTube, usually with a bundle of clips and stuff for them, and uh, they're very good, I like them. I obviously would love a Hero 8, and the price is coming down, I think it's less than 300 now, but it was close to 4 when the first came out, it was about 280 at the moment. I'd love to be able to splash out one of them. That'd be good. We shall see what the future brings. Off the road, this. It's really not the best of surfaces in places. Beyond that, it's, uh, it's very good. Good, it's lovely. It's usually quiet. Oops, it's easy. Especially when they've got lambs. They take off all over the place. That's a bit of a ride with some of your events of it. Yeah. you've got to watch it for. They're always, it's a separate, they always head to watch each other, or the lambs will always head straight for the, the mother. And they've not been taught 
the Green Cross Code. So in terms of the sound, I mentioned that the Zoom H1 had failed. Well, to quantify it, the Zoom H1 had failed, the Lavalier mix seems to have failed. Which should be a relatively easy fix, I've got another one uh, which I'll, I'll take and fix it. Um, but uh, look at this, what a view. That's stunning. Lovely. Um, but uh, obviously I've got the the Olympus recording the sound on our microphone in the helmet. And I think I've got it slightly closer to the mouth. And I've pulled down the the pull down wind wind cheater thing you get in the front of this helmet so hopefully that'll make a bit of a difference that would be the hope anyway we shall see a bit miffed the Lavalier has failed though it took me ages to wire that in took bits off and all sorts Like a Paul's missus. No shame. So this one, this road here, is the one that, where we're going in the opposite direction, would take us down the pheasants. See we are, stupid birds. And uh, would take us down towards St Mary's Lock and Muffet, another one. Um, and this way will take us up into Yarrow and Selkirk. Which is a nice wee road, I've not been along for ages obviously because of the lockdown. As I talked about Boris might be easing it. I know uh, Nicola's not so keen on it just yet, which is okay, fair enough, I get that. But I think it's going to cause a bit of an issue. I don't mind the divergence personally. In between English and Scottish governments or UK and Scottish governments. However, it will cause confusion because you'll get people who will, oh, I was listening to the UK government, so that's why I'm out doing what I'm doing. Uh, even though the Scottish government has said don't do the certain things, so it'll be interesting to see what happens later today. Or if Boris is supposed to be having his chat with the nation on Sunday, we'll see what happens then. Based on what I know, I wouldn't be easing it up just yet, but I can understand there's a lot of people really suffering in terms of earnings, jobs and stuff. Very lucky to be in a position where I'm not, but can imagine people are and must be kind of grim and they'll be desperate for this to sort itself out. So I do understand if they say we're going to have a limited opening of things. It's a 
That's lovely. Nice to be it. Follow the course of the road for 10 miles. been trying to teach myself a little bit more of the Da Vinci Dissolve. I have the basics, but uh, it can do so much more than I know anything about. And, uh, it's uh, quite an in-depth program. The fusion part of it shines. It's almost like lots of programs in one suite almost, but uh, Fusion just melts my head I'm trying to figure out what that's all about. So I'm watching some YouTube videos about how to create things from scratch in Fusion, whether that's a, a transition or um, an image of some kind. I'd like to, I don't know how to do. The thumbnails that you see people have on YouTube, I just don't know how to do that. Um, at first I thought it was a photography thing, you know, you have to do it in uh, a Photoshop type program. But it would appear not, this is all doable within DaVinci Resolve, or, or whatever program you use, if, if I'm right. Understanding that. Well, what to learn? Just to make it look nicer. Or appealing. It's a challenge. Side sorted because I do like it. it. Used to be brutal when I, I had the baffle out, and I've got a Yoshibura RS4 exhaust on it. And when I, I bought it from Stuart, it had the baffle out, and I kept the baffle out for a good while. It was absolutely gorgeous. What a sound, especially when you drop the throttle, you know, right bubble and gargling. It was beautiful. <laughs> However, you have that beautiful burble and gurgle or the, the loud noise it puts out is standard type of thing. You have that on a 24 hour iron butt run and uh, believe me it soon becomes less than beautiful. It's just another fatiguer. So good to uh, Ian Rebs to pop the, uh, the baffle back in. It's not, it's not a nice thing, but it's definitely not as loud. But for the type of riding I do sometimes, that's, uh, that's a welcome, a welcome uh, improvement. Ah, the smell of the countryside.
את סמכות. יאללה, אבל זה נראה לך ממש פיקח. עכשיו בוא נביא בית טוב. יאללה פורט, אי. אם לא מנסה סקיור, אנשים מנסה סקיור, אתה יודע, נו. אוקיי, נדבר לשאול, בוא בוא בוא. Imagine so. Yellow is gas, isn't it? Yellow pipes are gas. Must be water. Oh, 
God, that's beautiful. Through the trees. Huh. There's a gatehouse here that was flattened or rebuilt or something. There you go. But they flattened it, just put a nice entrance in. Oh, lovely. regularly cut the corners on this road. I've seen it so many times I've been counting one in the car. I've seen a bloody articulated lorry come along this. I shot myself. I was in a car to the reverse back. At some point where he could get by, I'm presuming it was used a sat nav and it just took him down here because it's not, uh, it's not suitable for an HTV, put it that way. Put it on a bloody Arctic. To be fair, the guy probably got himself on it and thought. Oh dear, this is not good. <laughs> what can he do? He couldn't use that little verse, could he? <laughs> 